Hi, I'm Jared Brown, Australian expat financial planner based here in Singapore. Welcome to my video series where we explore the key personal finance topics for Aussies all over the world. Today, what I, sh what I would like to share with you are the changes that were recently announced to the superannuation in Australia from the 1st of July, 2021, as well as some of the expected changes that are coming up. Now, before we dive in, I should highlight that far too many Australian expats ignore their superannuation while they're offshore, which can be detrimental later on. Not only is that money that you should be insuring is invested in line with your goals, in line with your risk profile, but it could also form a critical part of your retirement plan, particularly if you're looking to retire in Australia. Superannuation, whilst not being the only vehicle, is certainly one of the most tax efficient vehicles when it comes to retirement planning for anyone looking to actually retire in Australia. So please do pay attention to, to what's going on in super in Australia. Make sure you know where your super is, how it's performing, as well as keeping up to date with the latest changes. So let's get into what's actually happened with superannuation in Australia. Now there are three key changes that I would like you to be aware of. The first one is the increase in the concessional contribution cap from $25,000, now we're talking Australian dollars here, to $27,500. Now for anyone who's not aware, the concessional contribution is typically the money that your employer would contribute, which in Australia now is 10% of your salary. So if you earn $200,000, uh, excluding super, then your employer should contribute $20,000 into your super fund. Now, naturally, if you're an Australian expat, it's unlikely your employer is going to be contributing to your super fund. So what that means is that you can voluntarily contribute up to that 27,500 and potentially claim a tax deduction in Australia. Now, why would you look to claim a tax deduction in Australia if you're not paying tax there on your income? The reason you would consider this is if you have positively geared property in Australia or other capital gains or other taxable gains or taxable income in Australia that you would like to minimize the tax liability on. So make sure that you pay attention to this one. It can be a very handy way to avoid that exposure to the non-resident tax rate, which starts at 32.5%. So this is quite a nice bonus, particularly for Australian expats, if you do have rental income that you're paying tax on. Now, the other critical benefit with this one is from the 2018-19 financial year, concessional contributions can also accumulate for up to five years. So that, what that potentially means is that you've got a larger unutilized cap that you could take advantage of in future. Now, these do expire, so it is something that you have to pay attention to. Speak to your advisor, speak to your accountant, make sure that you're not missing out on tax deductions, and make sure that you're taking full advantage of super where it makes sense for you. Let's have a look at the second change. Now the second change that's been announced is an increase in the non-concessional cap. Now the non-concessional means after tax dollars. So for example, if you're working in Australia and you earned $100,000 and you pay $10,000 in tax, then that 90,000 is considered to be after tax dollars. Now the non-concessional cap was previously $100,000 per financial year. That's been increased to 110. So a relatively small increase, but still an increase nonetheless. So that means that you can contribute in any given financial year up to $110,000, subject to the work test, subject to your age. Typically, if you're below 65 and still working, you can make that contribution. Now, what is also quite a handy bonus is you can also utilize what is called the bring forward provisions. And what that allows you to do is to roll three years into one, contribute up to three years worth, so potentially 330,000, and nothing for the next two years. So this could be quite a handy way to really ramp up your superannuation balance. If you're a couple, then that could potentially mean that you could contribute up to 660,000 into your super in one go. So if you're starting to think about your retirement, if you're in your 50s, if you're 10 years away from retirement, really start giving superannuation some thought because particularly if you're looking uh, to retire in Australia, 
superannuation is going to be quite a valuable tool. But of course, make sure you're seeking advice when it comes to these contributions, because you don't want to be paying tax and you don't want to be uh, missing out on potential deductions where possible. Now, the third key change is the increase in what is called the account balance cap. Now, that has been increased from $1.6 million to $1.7 million. Now, for anyone looking to retire in Australia, when you retire, you can potentially con uh, convert your superannuation from accumulation phase, so while you're working, tax is paid inside your super, to what they call pension phase. That means you can start to withdraw tax-free money from your super, capital gains, dividends, all start to receive much more favorable tax treatment in that a lot of it becomes untaxable. And that way you can really start to enjoy a very tax-friendly retirement income. Now, why is that increase important? Because it allows you to have more in that tax-friendly environment. Now, we're probably going to see another increase due to indexation over the next two years. So if you are looking to convert your super from accumulation phase to pension phase, there may be some value in waiting. Now, very important here, make sure you seek professional advice from an Australian qualified advisor, because this could have pretty significant tax implications for you. And we more, want, really wanna make sure that your retirement income is as tax efficient as possible. So make sure you seek advice from your advisor, speak to your accountant if necessary, and just make sure that you're structuring your affairs in the most tax-friendly way possible. I hope that sheds some light on what's happening in, uh, with the superannuation rules in Australia. If you have any questions about your super, want to know where it is, how it's tracking, just want to review whether it's in the right place, please do feel free to write, uh, reach out. Feel free to reach out with any questions that you've got. Drop a note in the comments. Uh, please subscribe also uh, and remember to turn the notifications on. Really appreciate you tuning in and see you next time.